Last week announced that a Federal Reserve Bank of New York unit will partner with almost a dozen banks and other financial institutions to test out, here we go folks, digital dollars, a sign that Wall Street intends to push ahead with its cryptocurrency agenda despite recent upheaval in the market, you think? You know, isn't that impeccable timing for the FTX collapse, folks? Wouldn't you say, think about it. Some say this is um, a money laundering on crack, another central bank finance Ponzi scheme that will take away your children's and grandchildren's wealth. Certain people, of course, will do very well. They're going to control more of the money. They don't like you, they'll shut off your money. So I did a number of talks on digital currency and cashless society. And it's, I was spot on, you know, I'll include the links at the end. So this will literally be the end of freedom as we know it. This is not an overstatement, ladies and gentlemen, in my opinion. Some look, you know, I would think that uh, this, this crazy uh, nut job, uh, Alex Jones, that nut job, uh, he was right on this issue. So banks, including Citigroup, Wells Fargo, will work with the New York um, Innovation Center, Innovation, a uh, new network uh, as part of a 12-week test. Like I said last week, this is in beta phase now. Uh, so the technology known as Regulated Liability Network will allow banks to stimulate issuing digital money, uh, presenting uh, their customers' own funds before settling through the central bank reserves Fed coin, a central bank digital currency. So like I said last week, the Federal Reserve Bank of New York made the announcement. So ladies and gentlemen, remember November 2022, Fed coin, members of the U.S. banking community launched proof of concept for a regulated digital asset settlement platform. Uh, the explanation may only make sense for those of us who are versed in crypto technology and deal with blockchain and coding, something I'm passionate about. Been following this for years. Members of the U.S. banking community, they announced um, a proof of concept. So a POC project that will explore the feasibility of, you know, digital money platforms through. They're going through it. They've tested it. They've been watching since Bitcoin. Uh, it's now in beta phase. So they're going to use RLN using distributed ledger technology. The proposed platform would create innovation opportunities to improve financial settlements and would include participation from central banks, uh, commercial banks, and various sizes of regulated non-banks. They got everyone involved. So basically, FedCoin is now advancing and is now in the testing stage as of last week. So a cashless society would be um, the nail in the coffin for liberty and freedom offering centralization, not like decentralization for you know Bitcoin the likes of which Marx could only dream of. The existence of a government backdoor or spyware becomes a real possibility and given the state's track record, a real likelihood. Then, of course, the ability to track, ladies and gentlemen, freeze and even set expiration dates on your money. Yeah, you know, it'd be marketed probably as features to protect the public. It's all about protecting the public. And this might be the mark of the beast. So as of recently, about 6 million Americans considered, are considered unbanked. Those who have no checking or savings accounts, the poor, the weak, the vulnerable, uh, they can expect for life to get a little more difficult for them. Uh, I guess this is the price we pay for market innovation. So the Fed coin has bipartisan support right now. Some people are talking, taking the other road on it, but it overall has bipartisan support. Jay Powell appointed as Federal Reserve Chairman by President Trump said in October that the Federal Reserve is conducting research into issuing a digital currency on its own and is also in partnership with other central banks and, and the Bank for International Settlements. They got everyone on board, ladies and gentlemen. FedCoin is a terrible idea, in my opinion, and it may replace cash and hurt savers as well as allowing government to track your payments. The fact is, that whenever we provide information of any sort to private or government agencies, it eventually will be disseminated to crooks throughout the world. So a regulated digital asset settlement platform would simply be another platform to mine by digital crooks and government. It's centralized. That's why I always said, I didn't buy FTX. I kept buying Bitcoin. It's decentralized. 
FedCoin will be a universal electronic 24-7 liability to the Fed's balance sheet. The use of a blockchain is essential to guarantee um, you know, the re 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 resiliency of uh, the system. So blockchain is at its core a data uh, structure and does not have uh, to be a uh, distributed ledger. FedCoin would replace cash. It would replace paper money and coinage. It would permit instant analysis of transactions as opposed to the privacy that cash affords. It would also obviously allow for blacklisting like they're doing in China of people that the government doesn't like. So, which I'm sure will rotate through whatever administration, Republican, Democrat, who's in office, and uh, they'll just shut your money off. They don't like you. So these are concerning powers, uh, and they would also permit monetary powers that are concerning, in my opinion. I'm looking at both sides of it. Just like if you look at, um, like, withdrawing from an ATM gives you the power to be private with your spending. Withdrawing from an ATM also gives you the power to save in different ways, right? So, and if you don't have an ATM, the government will be very easily able to do things like, you know, negative interest rates, for example, expiration dates on money, stuff like that. Can you imagine? Just change it with a flick of a switch. So I don't think it's going to be great for savers. It's going to take more money out of your pocket and give it to the government. So let's put it that way. So, so this 12 week POC will test a version of the RLN design that operates exclusively in the US dollars where commercial banks issued stimulated digital money or tokens representing the deposits of their own customers and settle through stimulated central bank reserves on a shared, like, um, multi-entity distributed ledger. If you study this stuff, I'm, I'm a little geeky with this stuff. So some of the, the largest financial institutions are involved in this 12 week program. Um, it's the, the, the technology is being provided by S, uh, ETL and they're powered by Amazon Web Services. Good old Jeff Bezos is going to get a kickback. Swift, the global financial messaging service provider, is also participating in the initiative to support, uh, you know, this across the whole international financial ecosystem. They need them on. So from Bitcoin to Dogecoin, there seems little uh, long-term hope for those who love privacy and anonymity when uh, the largest corporations and firms work with the Federal Reserve to roll out a central bank digital currency. CBDC is coming. So, you know, would you like to know who uh, else was working on this with the feds that I found out? Former FTX CEO Sam Bankman, great dresser, was until last week a major political donor. As we, I talked about this, everyone talked about this, 5.2 million to the Joe Biden presidential campaign, over 40 million to Democratic, uh, Democrats and their campaigns, uh, Democratic candidates ahead of the November midterm elections and influencers in Washington. But another guy in his firm is said to have given the Republicans. So covered both, both bases there, sides of the fence. So Bankman regularly met with regulators and his family's involved with regulators, lawmakers. His dad went to MIT and how the crypto industry should be regulated. He was a vocal supporter of a bill, in particular, this bipartisan Digital Commodities Consumer Protection Act, the DCCPA, and it's still in progress. Look that up, ladies and gentlemen. We know for certain that CBDCs are coming as well as more regulation. And given the trajectory of both, a cashless society is too. What is less certain is whether or not Sam Bankman for his culpability in what may amount to one of the largest thefts of all time will ever see jail time. Based on his family connections, this goes really deep. No, he was the, he was the front guy, in my opinion. This goes deep. Uh, remember, folks, the scariest phrase known to man is, I'm from the government. I'm here to help you. So technically, people, you know, technically, people, they will be able to turn off your monies with a push of a button. So I'm willing to bet they'll go for mass adoption by pushing UBI via the shitcoin, universal basic income. So I'll leave you with this. True confidence is living in uncertainty and moving forward. One thing that was exposed with Sam Bankman is 
he laughed at all this woke stuff and he just had his floppy hair and his sandals and slept on a beanbag and his sh disheveled shirt and shorts. You know, I don't, and, the, and here's a story, you may not have heard this, when he was going for a round of funding with Sequoia, an investment banker, he was playing, I think, League of Legends, whatever, a video game, as he was doing the pitch meeting. And the guy on the other side of the phone from Sequoia found this out, and he goes, oh, man, he's playing a video game. This guy's a genius. Give him the $220 million, and now your money's gone. Never trust a guy with hair like that. He's not in a suit. Or a guy who wears a suit without any socks and showing his ankles and hairs. I only talk to people in suits or sport coats. Can we go back to the days of Las Vegas when the women used to wear white gloves? I wasn't born yet. Uh, you know, guys wore suits on planes. You know, I don't take a meeting unless you've got a sport coat on, pal. Unbelievable. I get, that guy should be fired. $200 million because this guy's got funny hair and he's playing a video game. Those days are over. Those days are, this proves it. What a joke. What a clown. That's, you, you really see the forest through the trees there? Oh, you're playing a video game? That's so innovative. That's so creative. And you're wearing a pair of shorts in a meeting. God, let's give that guy 200, 200 million bucks. Unbelievable. But with Sam Bankman, it goes way deep. If you look at his family connections, MIT, and everything involved. And just the timing's very interesting. Not a conspiracy guy, but uh, there's conspiracy truths and conspiracy falsehoods. So this is very interesting, but this goes very deep, and this is going to be terrible for the markets, like I said, because interest rates are going up. You're going to see a lot of exposure. Companies are going to be exposed. Millions of layoffs. I heard about this before the midterms of millions of companies and millions of people are going to be laid off, and I did a talk about this months ago about all the layoffs are going to happen, and it's happening. It's happening. Interest rates, people are getting exposed. FTX got exposed, and it's shameful. It's shameful. The corruption runs deep, and it runs wide. Take care.